Hello everyone, it is the Red Men Podcast, the day after the night that was the night of deadline madness uh, for Liverpool, the January transfer window Wait, is closed. That order. Yeah, uh, Liverpool are back to winning ways, uh, and I am Paul Machen, I'm joined in the studio by Chris Pajak, and from home we've got Sam Walker and James Sutton as well, what a team, what a team of people to talk about, a, a bunch of wonderful things for the Reds. Um, we've got a kickoff question before we dive into it, obviously we're going to be going deep on, onto some of the deadline day stuff and, and looking ahead to Brighton on Wednesday as well, but Tom Mundy um, sent us in a kickoff question, normally we say no, no, not football related, but he said football related, balls to your rules, uh, if every Premier League team picked one player to be their champion, which team would win in a battle to the death? Now, you know, we, we, that, that's a podcast in and of itself, so I'm sure and it down to most of the top contenders um, City, Liverpool, United, Chelsea, Leicester, Everton, Arsenal, Spurs. Um, and I, I was talking to Ben before we did this and how I have this mental block whenever I'm trying to write down the big teams. And I always go, who, who, who have I missed? And it's always Tottenham. Like, I, I just can't wrap my head around them existing. It's mad. Um, so. Let's go through it. Who would be that? You know, they're going to pick someone as their, you know, battle to the death champion at each football club. Manchester City, Gundogan, probably at the moment, no certainly. doubt. And he's going to wear that armor, that just goes over the shoulder there, yeah, and a bit of a strap, and maybe I don't know if there's, I don't know, some kind of something else and some boots. Would he have a strap on? On, not a strap on. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> strap across. <laughs> yeah, um, and the, yeah, some big boots, leather boots up to his knees, kinky, knee highs, kinky boots. And he'd, he'd ha- I think he'd have a spear. Oh yeah, I think. Okay, yeah, sound absolutely. I, I, I can't really come more than that. Um, <laughs> James, J- James Sutton, who were Man United picking as their champion? Um, Cavani, so Uruguayan. Oh. I reckon he'd do the same as well. Exactly like, yeah. the, like a you want, bit of you, armor. Can, you want someone who's going to be a bit snide and a bit nasty. And those Uruguayans, as well, we know, man, that you know they're not they're not they're not afraid to leave a foot in. Yeah, I, he's 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 a definite shout. And also, the rest of the United squad are a gang of fannies. So <laughs> <laughs> I reckon they go, they just pick Bruno Fernandes because I know he's our best, yeah. and then he just tear up this die every little, time someone gets near him. Yeah. little weed. He'd have like throwing stars arena. or something. <laughs> <laughs> Keep his distance. Yeah, Sam. Uh, ooh, who uh, who do you reckon Chelsea are picking? Oh God, Chelsea. They're another bunch of pansies, aren't they? Not going to pick Timo Werner or Havertz, are you? I'd probably go Kante because he's just he's just going to get in the mix of any and just start kicking people. I think there's yeah. a lot to be said yeah. for that. He's just hard. He doesn't matter how big he is. He's just hard. Uh, even he can stab more, you loads of times yeah. really, really quickly, I reckon. <laughs> but the other oh, one is I reckon Thiago yeah. Silva could be a bit of a warlord. He's been around the block, hasn't he? Milan, PSG, sort of c- conquered the continent. So I'm sure uh, he'd have some veteran tricks up his sleeve. But yeah, let's go with Kante. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Leicester City. Did. There's no one there that you're really thinking, I want him. Vardy's probably got a good... I bet he's got, bet he's got a set of knuckle dusters at home. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd get... Abs- I think everyone else would wipe the floor with him. There's no one in Leicester's side that makes me think, yeah, I'd have you. What about Chris, um, Albrighton? Soyon Shu. Yes, Ooh. there you go. That That's probably... Yeah, that's a good shout. That's a good shout. Okay, so oh, take, oh, oh. <laughs> take surgery, definitely. Um, right, so out. Um, Everton, big dunk. James, yeah, no, still, <laughs> still <laughs> big dunks <laughs> all day. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, it's gotta be. It's, it's gotta be big dunk. There is, there's no one in their current team that can compete with the the sheer <laughs> the sheer size of the man, the stature of the man. I like the idea of them. Uh, like Richarlison probably puts himself forward for it, thinking he's dead. Yeah, of course hard. he does. <laughs> do, you, do, you reckon Carlo, do you reckon Carlo could just walk in with a cigar though, and everyone would just go, nah, yeah, you can have that, Carlo, mate. You, you're the man. He's like the godfather, isn't he? He would command the deal of respect in those, in those kind of environments. I don't know. I, I mean, Arsenal are definitely picking Granit Xhaka, only because if he dies. No one's asked. See, I had I had it down as Rob Holding. Oh, right. Because yeah. I feel like he played Kane's character quite well. Just yeah. crap. 
Rob, and then, yeah, Rob Holding is but, the kind of thing. Was that Ace Ventura two joke where he goes, he has to fight, he has to fight someone, and it's this big giant lumbering fella, and then he turns around and he's got a little fella in his backpack, <laughs> and that's when Robert, you think, oh no, we're fighting this big Rob Holding, and then he turns around and he's got ja- granite shaker, and there you're like, oh, all right, sounds fair. Come on, we'll have a bit of that. Um, Tottenham, and it's. But do we reckon well, there's, two, there's, two, there's two choices here. Harry Kane's just going to play dead all the time, isn't he? So he might win on, <laughs> on proxy. Or you've just got to go with Hoiberg. He's another Kante, isn't he? He's just going to be horrible and hurt everyone and just like, you know, stab everyone in the bottom of the leg and you wouldn't even realise it until you're bleeding out to death. He's just, he's just nasty, isn't he? So, yeah, one of them two. Pick your poison. Yeah, definitely. And then, okay, let's have a suggestion from everyone is who's, who's, who's Liverpool's entrance into this. Uh, we've, we've seen the rivals now. Oh, come on. It's Virgil. At the, ooh, even even now, leg. yeah. <laughs> even now, it's Virgil Van Dijk. I just don't think he likes to get to get into the nitty gritty. He's the just going to and... hold them all off and slap them in the face. That's all <laughs> he's going to do. And they're going to try and they're going to try and like get six of them. Would he just bat them away? Like yous are nothing. Strong to me. Conan you, the Barbarian vibes from it. Uh, you're forgetting. You're forgetting, Chris. That you're forgetting, Chris. That we've got we've got a Scottish lad in our team who would go to absolute war for you, time and time again. It's Andy Robbo. <laughs> give him, all give day him two long. buck fast. Yeah, and just yeah, say, mate, get in there, lads. Just, just fists. Just fists. Nothing else. Put it. Strip, put a small strip, dagger strip in his teeth to the waist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Oh, what about the? It, it, I'm going to stick with the small man syndrome and go with Sadio. I reckon he's a bit of a dog at war as well. He's in, he's always horrible in a game. Any elbows everywhere, and I reckon it, I reckon him can and Hoiberg would be some watching their bantamweight division. Like, but it'd be, uh, be, it'd be <laughs> I, I'm going I'm going with the little guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like the idea of just like a, a Robbo or a Milner. Just crawling out from underneath at a pile of bodies with just like a butter knife clenched between the teeth, <laughs> dripping in human viscera, um, and yeah, just to, uh, just to stand, to stand on top, just like John McClane almost covered in filth and blood and stuff, and yeah, somehow managed to come out on top. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon any of them would do the job for us. Um, just want to say welcome aboard uh, to Cali Condon. He's just joined as a club captain uh, member here on YouTube. You get access to the final word show uh, every Monday bonus content for, for members who are on tier 2 and tier 3 so yeah I hope you enjoyed that one it was an absolute belter um, we're getting shouts here in the, in the comments for Shaq Big Nat uh, why not you know in terms of like just the man of the moment he does look like an old school World War 1 elite British soldier he's got that vibe de- yeah he definitely definitely or if he was wrestling jeans and a lumberjack shirt yeah <laughs> oh yeah, hundreds of big, big clothesline in his locker. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, as Scotty ninety nine is in Robbo, I'm Scottish. It's got to be Robbo. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I mean, we might find the Cabac's a decent shelf for this. He looks like a very angry man as well from looking at his YouTube. I just love the idea of giving Robbo just a big stick of black pudding and go get him, lad. And he's just fucking there <laughs> with a huge stick of black pudding to ask if people left, yeah. right, and centre. Yeah. Stone away, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Sure. I, yeah, I'll, I'll take your word for it on that one. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, there you go. That will. That that is that. Um, uh, we will be uh, discussing the transfer window, as mentioned, as promised, for anyone who's stuck <laughs> with us so far. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, obviously, the Reds being back in a bit of form, deadline day madness, uh, and the Brighton game. Uh, after a very, very short break from us, we'll see you in a second. Yes, welcome back to the podcast. It's still me, Paul Mates, and still Chris Page. I'm still Sam Walker and still James Sutton as well. We're going to be diving into the Reds now. And um, yeah, Chris, back to winning ways. Um, it's mad what a difference sort of a, a week or something can make to your life. You know, just oh, probably 
probably even going back not not far beyond the last podcast, maybe even the last podcast. You know, we were down in the dumps, the Reds were in good form. You know, we were we were start, it felt like we were turning the corner, but we hadn't done it in terms of points. We were and about we had, to be mourinho Yeah, and we had no centre halves, you know, and, and it was a and it was a major problem. And all we wanted was Liverpool to win and buy centre halves and let's start with the winning stuff. You know, we talked about this. Man City have found a bit of form. We've now seen everyone else is starting to just stumble and trip as well. Perfect time, really, just to get kind of back on the horse and get winning again. That's it, isn't it? I mean, obviously, we, that Man City game has been looming large for a couple of weeks now, hasn't it? So we it, we needed to make sure that we got points before that City game. We wanted to make sure that that game actually meant something um, with regards to the Premier League and, and, and where that ends up, at the, the trophy ends up at the end of the season and stuff. So, um, you know, we've got a big game against Brighton upcoming. And then it is straight into Manchester City, but on the back of two two very good victories, on the back of two very good performances, and on the back of three games in a row where we scored goals, my words, I'm feeling much better about things. It is. It's mad, isn't it, James? It's just one of those things where you know you don't realise it. It's a bit like when you get to March and you realise that you've been once again absolutely taken up by seasonal affective disorder, and you don't realise how miserable it is at being in the dark all the time. And it's like you're getting through life and you can't work out why. You, you, you feel rubbish despite all the other things and you know COVID notwithstanding uh, and then Liverpool win a couple of games of football and you're like oh oh okay wow it was that it was literally just the fellas running around kicking the ball that had done this to me and I think and I think it's been the same for the players as well because one of them one of the biggest things for me apart from as Chris was, was saying then about you know about about the points uh, you know needing the points is just the happiness and the smiling and the joy on the players faces again it's something that we've really, really missed. You know, it's been a, it's been a real slog for them recently, and it, it, it you know, it, this at this point in the season, you know, every, everyone everyone expected us to be top of the league. Everyone expected us to be flying, and it, it hasn't transpired. And just as, to see to see the players enjoying themselves and enjoying their football and playing with a, a bit of confidence and a bit of verb, especially the second half, that was the biggest thing for me. Was is, is, was was coming out of that second half and going, no, we're 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 better than this. We're much, much better than this. We're faster than this. We're quicker than this. We're more direct than this. And that, you know, that that that's that second uh, that second goal just 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 summed it all up, didn't it? Really. Yeah, it was. It was just. It was just lovely to lovely to see. The second though. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh God! Yeah. I didn't watch that yesterday. No, I did. No, I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I haven't watched it today yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First thing, first thing. In a minute. Done, yeah. It was, um, it's right though, isn't it, it Sam? You know, you can see the, the players. It, it was interesting. I just think Klopp's approach to all this, you know, he's, he's been asking, uh, being asked the same questions over and over again, you know, and he's been given different responses to it and then he's been having it all quoted back to him every other every other press conference and interview. They've just, you know, he, he talked about it. He had, a, he had a thing the other week and I got a bit worried when he talked about it. I, I was up late at night thinking about how to get it out and I had really, Brendan Rodgers vibes to when he then he was pacing his kitchen he come and he develop and he, just, he invents three at the back because um, that's how Brendan Rodgers I think views football um, and, and I, I must admit I was a little concerned but I, I like the fact that you know Liverpool have just ca- carried on doing their business they have shifted some things around they've tried some different things but it, you know Jürgen stayed steadfast he's drawn the attention off the players and onto himself. Um, and yeah, it, you know, it looks at the moment like it's paid dividends because yeah, it feels like we've turned the corner. His mentality must be absolutely steely hard. I mean, as a fan, I know, and I know it's totally different, but we were we were lost. We we, we followed our team for a while, and we, we couldn't get our heads around what was going on. And Klopp just said time and time again, you know, we continue to wear, we do the right things, tweak a few things, and he gets it right. And I, I'll be honest with you, he, even after the Spurs game. That, that was it for me then. I was, I was, we were back because in the first half against West Ham, it wasn't great, but you just knew second half we had more in the tank to come. And that all comes from, for me, from the way Klopp handles the media, the way Hop Clan, Hop Clan, the way Klopp handles, <laughs> the way Klopp handles um, any situation, pressure. He's been there before with Dortmund, with Mainz, now with Liverpool on bigger scales. He knows how to deal with these situations. And I think the squad now know how to deal with these situations as well. And this little slump that we've just been through, hopefully will really give us the sort of backbone and foundation now to overcome anything else that's thrown at us this season. I mean, what other club in the history of football had every single centre-half they've actually got ruled out for the season It's and still go on a winning run and, and beat Tottenham and West Ham away looking absolutely fabulous doing so? 
Yeah, and that's the really the really encouraging thing, and it, you can only say it now that we've racked up a couple of wins and done some business in the transfer market. Is that I, I like the narrative I, that was, uh, and we had this when we were top of the league of X, Y, and Z are having their best season ever, and they are below us in the league, and we're having our deepest injury crisis we've ever had, and we're able to do this. And obviously, City are muddy in the waters a little bit on that, but. I mean, that's it. Still remains true, doesn't it? You know, again, we're we're right, right behind Manchester United once again, and it feels again like Liverpool are the team on the way up, and Man United are going to have a little bit of a floundering period or whatever. And it has all been done. And it's nice just to go back to the narrative of going, look at what we've achieved in the face of the adversity that we've had. Yeah, that's it. Like, I mean, Klopp's been through this. He's obviously his manager at Dortmund and stuff as well. So he'll know a little bit more after that of then going through what he's gone through at Liverpool. So I think that makes a big difference. And it's an experience that he can draw on. You know, the players have had it so good for a couple of years now that they probably found it a little bit hard to take. And, you know, they got used to it and probably started to believe a little bit of the hype around them as well. And I don't think it was any, through any sort of... Um, non-application of effort. I think they continued to apply themselves, just things weren't working, things were going against them and stuff, but they'll have all been, they'll be better players for going through this, for having to work this type of stuff out on the training ground, listen to the coaches again, you know, tweak the things, try things a little bit differently. And Liverpool, I think, will come out of this, whenever this is, probably when Virgil comes back, by the way, mm -hmm. They will come out of this a better team for going through this mm -hmm. because they'll have had to work harder for those results and they'll know if they just drop off a couple of percent, you can be down in seventh place in the league like that. And that just refocuses the mind. No, I, I think that's absolutely spot on. And I think a couple of points there, James, you know, the, the Klopp Dortmund stuff has been referenced quite a lot in the last couple of weeks, you know, about the, his last season there where they were they had a catastrophic start to the season um, where they were basically bottom of the Bundesliga and Klopp had to then take them away, got them all regrouped and then came back and got them to a respectable finish but nowhere near where, where they were expected to be before obviously leaving the club. And it did feel a bit like this time around, like Klopp's going, no, 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 no. Like, I'm not, I'm not having any of that. We, we, you know, he's, caught, he's got, he's a better manager. You know, people, I think people had this a couple of times where they do things like Klopp's been figured out. I remember hearing this in the first season. His brand of football doesn't work anymore, and all this absolute fucking horse shit. It's all a lot of this stuff is not necessarily <laughs> wrong, but it's a lot of very simple narratives come from people who would, who are hoping that this stuff is true. I don't think Klopp believes it for for a second, and I think on the and the worst case for Liverpool is that it's it's a, it's an environment where you can say to these players, like Chris is saying, here you go, this is what happens, this is what happens if you take your eyes off the uh, off the prize in front of you. It's yeah, it, we we're we're getting the best years of Jurgen Klopp. We're getting we talk about the players, you know, we talk about our players and having their best years, having the best years of Mohamed Salah, the best years of Sadio Mane. We're having the best years of Jurgen Klopp. This is peak Klopp. He's learned so much, and all the all the kind of pieces of the puzzle that he has in front of him are, are, are all there. His his team selections as well. I mean, I, I you know you look you look back to the weekend, the, the game the other day, and you you know okay, there's there's there's, there's injuries, but putting Shakiri in and giving Shakiri those minutes and giving him that boost and, and, and making someone like that who's been on the fringes of our squad feel so important to the project and so important to the season. And you see, and you see it on the pitch. You see the confidence and you see what he does to these players. It, 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 there aren't many managers right now that I can think of that that not only put that faith in, in, in some of these fr you know, fringe players, but lift them up to such a level that they feel like they can compete and, and you know, stake a claim for a starting place, you know? Shakiri right now, I mean, you know, he, he's got to be thinking to himself, you know, I, I should be starting most games now, regardless of who's fit. And that's yeah. down to the mentality that Klopp puts across and, and gets, gets, it gets in his players. When you consider, like, Sam, the, the biggest uh, hurdle we have to face really this time, it's not so much, I think, the motivation of the, the, the top players, because I think they're, they're, they're cut from a different cloth. Absolute elite sports people just want to keep winning. Um, it's the lads who've been on the fringes, and it's mentioned there. You know, a couple of a couple of the names there. It is just Jaden Shakiri's, and to some extent, your Divock Origi's, and your and your James Milner's, and the, the lads who who walk into a season going, "Well, I, I, I'm not buying that. I'm I'm not buying that. If I work really hard, I'm starting games of football for Liverpool anymore because I've I've got a bank of evidence there that suggests I'm just here to make the numbers up. But it's a great it's a great point. This last this last few weeks, in fact, all all all, all over this season. We've had lads who you wouldn't expect 
who've got who, who've stepped up actually young players and players who we consider to be on the fringes. And again, it's another another example of the fantastic mentality. Well, our our first team now is what would be considered a cup team last year. So when you see uh, Liverpool eleven now, no, I know it's it's funny, isn't it? But you, when when you see an eleven lined up like the game against West Ham, you're looking across the park and you see I counted five slash six depending on who you pick players that would start the game if they were fit and available. And I think that's that is quite frightening. But we we we're, we're elevating those players to deliver for us at the, almost the same level, especially Sunday, the same level that the, the players that are missing are putting in the performance they're putting in. Just leading off from James's point there. The likes of Shaqiri. I look at the likes of James Milner. James Milner is one of the most experienced football players that's played in the Premier League. He's played for some absolutely top clubs, big clubs as well, like Newcastle, Leeds, Villa. We're not talking about just someone who's coming through the ranks here. He's been at five of maybe the top seven side clubs in the Premier League. He's won everything there is to win. He's he's capped at umpteen times for England, under 21, Liverpool, City. And a guy like him still seems to look at Jürgen Klopp as the Messiah. And that, for me, tells its own story. If, you, if, if James Milner is having like laughs and giggles at how genius Klopp is on Sunday, and, and just all the things he does, and he's got James, he's got James Milner playing at the level he is, believing that he can still deliver in a midfield against you know your Pogba's and Fernandez's and you know your Hoybergs and Sons and stuff. At 35, the man can achieve anything. So for all these young players who are in and around the squad now, they've got the the, the perfect role models and manager for themselves to become that, to take that next step like Curtis Jones I believe any under any other manager his head might have gotten too big but he's he's exactly where he needs to be yeah no I think that's great just, just on Klopp and having his best years and riffing off sort of James and Sam there he's even timed his dip better this time than the Dortmund one hasn't he yeah. you know it's, it's timing that dip at the beginning of the season for Dortmund it was it was really tough for them he did it when we were top of the league yeah, like, yeah, fuck yeah. for that like you know what I mean <laughs> Get yourself a cushion. Build yourself up a little buffer zone. A bit of crap. Right, lads, now have the dip. Yeah, you can build yourself up a crap buffer uh, so you can afford to eat it up. And yeah, it goes back to that point about, you know, just being, it's a perfect time really to kind of get back. We left it as late as we possibly can. It's a bit like the old, you know, if we go on to win the league, we'll look back on this spell as like the, the movie cliche of having one second left to defuse the bomb or, you know, you're pulling up on an aeroplane before it hits the ground and whoosh, we just get above the mountain, you know what I mean? That that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it will be interesting to see. Just in terms of elevating players, then Chris, you know, we, we we've got two new players added to the ranks in deadline day madness. Uh, two actual centre halves. I mean, it was a bit mad. We were in on the Sunday, um, and the Ben Davies stuff broke while we were live watching the game. And I think we all went, oh, okay, well, we've obviously done some business, there's some, there's some thought gone into that. And I think we all went, okay, well, we expected that to be that. Um, and then we went and signed another one, and obviously the, the massive stuff is, is play, has played a part in that. But of course, but then they, they, they've clearly held on to that massive injury news, and they've held it back until they've got the signings through the door. So it's smart business and stuff, isn't it? And while everyone was looking over here at Ben Davies, Liverpool were on the sly, probably getting the lad that they've absolutely wanted for more than six months, and you know they've been looking at Quebec for eighteen months, and we've done it on this mad little try to buy where it's basically a million and a half or a million quid, isn't it? So we brought, basically brought two. Lads through the door for a million and a half and 500 coming back for the Minamino stuff. So we've essentially spent net about a million at the moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've solved the problem with having too many players to register in the Champions League and all that type of stuff by Minamino going out. And he may go on to have a better career for this low move as well. I'm sure we'll talk about that later. But we've actually brought, brought a centre half in that we wanted for about 30 million earlier on in the year. It's just wizardry of the highest level. It, it is, isn't it? And it's, uh, uh, you know, time will tell on the levels of quality of, of both of them, really, James. But, uh, you know, we... All we will, all we really wanted, we were all just desperate for centre halves, and we were reaching the point at which we were convincing ourselves that, like, broken down, well past it, lads. You know, there's people going like, just get Ragnar Klavan back, as though, as though he's been frozen in in, in amber. You know, like, you know, frozen, <laughs> like, kept like, uh, like in, 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 in formaldehyde in the Tate, ready to just be like cut open and, and continue his career exactly as he was. <laughs> um, it's it, that's how desperate. We could, we've become and it's then Liverpool have gone out and got two lads that let's be honest none of us can get, can attest to know a lot about but it's clear that there's been more than five minutes of deliberation gone into the, both of these signings 
Yeah, and there's and there's and there's so many parts at play. You know that, that you you mention you mention Edwards and, and and the finances behind it all. You know, make make no mistake. You know, our our, our club and, and our income has been the. You know, we've earned the grand total of fuck all basically in, in in over 12 months and any any business in the world bar you know the the absolute top of the pile you take away all the income and it, the effect is absolutely huge you know for all the the, the kind of um the, the furor on social media the fsg out and all that kind of kind of shite i'm not going to give that any any fucking credence because our hands have been tied and to get two center backs in like you say one of whom we've been okay he you know I don't. I don't think Quebec was top of the list, but he was on the list. And yeah. to get someone that was on the list for for that price, I think we were quoted something like twenty five million or twenty two million back in back in the summer to get. Well, all the reports I've seen were like four, were closer to forty, which is well, well, outrageous when you think about it. There you go to, to 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 get him in with 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 an option to buy as well. Not not a, you know we don't have to buy this fella. He's we've, he's got an audition here. I mean, it, 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 you know, that's what I'm saying. All these parts of this deal are absolutely perfect. Spoken like a true equity card holder. <laughs> there, James, uh, James, uh, <laughs> don't, don't You'll be treading the boards for six months, as I understood it. <laughs> yeah, as long as he doesn't forget his lines. But, um, but no, it, 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 you know, it, 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 makes, it makes perfect sense. And, you, you know, you, you, he's, he's, he's someone that, um, you know, he's, 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 he's very assured. He's very confident. I mean, within like... 20 minutes of it of us signing him his his twitter header is him sort of standing you know a lot looking looking huge and you know he, he clearly backs himself okay he's had a, you know he's had a difficult time at, at, at Schalke this season but again you know you look at the setup at Liverpool you look at the coaching you look at the players that we've brought in and developed and, and, and turned into world-class players it's a really really easy sell right now and I think someone like him can can walk straight into this first team it's not it's we, you know he's not someone that I think is going to need too much coaching I think you know obviously um, uh, Davis you know, I think that is more of a that is more of just getting a body in right now. That's getting somebody in that we. But again, somebody young that we can develop. And and you know, the, the latter part of this season, going into next season, um, you know, it, it is someone that's going to have a really big part to play because right now, um, it's it's not just having centre backs out. It's the knock on effect on your squad. Our midfield needs to be rotated. Who the fuck can we rotate in our midfield? Half of them are playing centre back, yeah. you know. So all of a sudden, that centre back problem is affecting the entirety of the team. So then it does become a case of, of getting a body in, and we've managed to get two bodies in on transfer yeah. deadline day for you know really relatively low cost, low risk, which is a huge a huge thing in this market right now in this window. Teams can't afford; they cannot afford to be spending 10, 15, 20 million on a player that might be crap. You can't do that because it's a seller's market. Exactly. I think, look, Sam, if, if we keep either of these players beyond the summer, you'll know that we were, they've, either, they've either really impressed or the plan was to have them all along. And, you know, and, and if the plan was to have them all along, then, and then I'm even more encouraged by this because I think the, the ne obvious negatives around this are that we've not you know, gone out and bought a marquee centre-half. You know, we've not gone and made somehow against you know against the will of Leipzig Upper Meccano happen as is, is the obvious example in all of this uh, and people will naturally be upset with all of those even though the reality doesn't make, make those things possible um, but you know it, as I say if, if, if Kabak comes in and, he, and, he, and he's, now at, he's now at the club for three or four years off the back of this then that what we've done there is an absolute genius piece of move if we manage to get a tune out of Ben Davies and I, I hold no expectations of him but you know, all the talk about him has been really, really positive. But it's it's buttons. It's almost it's no. The only way you lose on him is if the, if he if he suffers like a, a genuine career-ending injury. And even so, even if you only get a handful of games out of him, you've probably still not made a loss. That and that that's just how smart the move is. Well, with Ben Davies, as you said earlier, it's, it's definitely looking more long-term. But I think I think with him. There's, there comes a value with it. I mean, for a start, Celtic could probably buy him off you in the summer anyway for a few million quid, even if he wants to get rid. But I doubt that's that's obviously the plan. The, the really interesting thing with Kabak is he's been brought in, as you said, in an audition. Now, he can't not perform now until the summer or he won't get his move. 
at the same time, if we'd have, if we'd have spent twenty million pounds on him now, he could have come in and thought, oh, thank God I got out of Schalke. I can rest my laurels a little bit now. I've got a big move to a big Champions League club, but he's actually got to play out to his skin now until the summer to earn the move or to earn any move. So I think it's, it's a real smart bit of work from us because we're now hopefully going to see the best of him, him at his real 100% with quality around him. I mean, I was critical because of where Schalke are. I'm a bit nervous about him in general. I mean, yeah. he's a bit like Degsy, so we'll see how that turns out. But yeah, it, I just, I, you can't look Lord Michael Edwards enough for what he's done here. It, it's left us in a position also where we can probably still go bigger than someone if we want to sign Concert or Botman or Oruba Makane. So I think it, it's just it's just clever. And hopefully, I mean, I don't know what you guys think of this, but hopefully we get to see them both play together at some point. But I, I do have a lingering feeling we won't for a while. I think I, there's, I, there's no doubt in my mind, we, the, provided neither of them are awful, and we'll know in the coming days and weeks and, uh, and whatever on that, I think I just think we will. You know, we will we will definitely see a game of football with both of them playing together because what's the point? What's the point? Or if not, it'll be one of the other one of the other lads. We might well see. Um, what is it like? Nat Phillips or whatever might you know what I mean? Alongside okay, yeah, one yeah. of them or, or something like that. We've got we've got options to rotate in there, which which makes a big a big difference indeed. But isn't it just? Wouldn't you just rather Liverpool sign someone for a million quid and him be amazing than sign them for eighty million quid and him be amazing? I'd rather yeah. Liverpool do. I'd, I'd rather Liverpool genuinely spend less and the player be absolutely amazing. It's not about the there's transfer. a man who's had to deal with having the, a budget but, in but, life but for Paul, a while. It's <laughs> not about the flipping transfer fee. It's about the player and yeah. how he suits the system. There are no sure things in football. We know this. Like Harry Maguire was eighty million quid. He's not fit to lace Virgil van Dijk's boots, mm-hmm. you know, and th- there just aren't. And, and and maybe there are a handful, maybe. But even then, it comes down to your opportunities and the system that you're yeah. playing in and how the manager thinks of you and all that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, I think Mbappe is probably right now one of the closest things. Haaland's probably one of the closest things. I would much rather Liverpool save their money and buy one of those guys than spend 50 million on it. Look at, yeah. look at Man City's defence. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's brilliant, but they've gone through £500 million pounds of player to get to that point. And, the, and, the, and in fairness, what, 50% of their centre-back partnership, they bought for, what, the best part of 50 million quid five years ago, you know, in, in, John, in John Stones, and they're only now getting the best out of them. I think it's an interesting point. At this point now, it's actually easier to buy big money players <laughs> or short. It's easy to find a sure thing in inverted commas in other areas of the pitch. You can't find Virgil van Dijk. Everyone in the world is looking for another Virgil van Dijk. There's 10 right teams in world football that play, maybe 10 teams that I know of, that play as ridiculously a high line and a pressing mm-hmm. game like we do. So you've got a choice of 20 centre-halves, two of them are yours. Yeah. Um, and 18 of them are playing for huge rivals across the continent. Yeah. It's not it's not all, an easy thing to do. Yeah, they're all looking for the line of succession, all looking for the next ones. And you're right, as far as a hold, holding pattern and stuff, this might well be it. And there might well be guys that have identified them, and there will be. And I'm sure, I I would not be shocked to Liverpool go, if provided we've got the money, and we'll have to see how the, how the world changes. But I, I, I genuinely believe Liverpool will buy at least another centre. Even if they kept both of these lads, they'll buy another centre half in the summer. Um, yeah, they just, they just have to, don't they? I think they will. They will go big on a, on a main target. But it's been said the main guys they really wanted, like uh, Ozan Kabach, was on a short list, but clearly uh, Delet. Car or whatever his name was, the Marseille lad was clearly above yeah. him. They clearly wanted him first and first and foremost. There's the you know there's the the, the, the guy from Braga who they were interested in as well. Obviously the likes of Upper McCann and, and Kunde as well, and all these other all these other guys that I'm sure they've got a, a, a strong eye on. They, they can come to the decisions on the Kabak stuff. The, the Dexy Lovren comparisons, you know. I mean, let's be honest. I think we, we we've done Dexy Lovren a massive disservice over the years, but it, it's his own fault because he's just built up a ton of baggage around his himself at Liverpool. If you're only buying in, if you're only having Dexy's career again, that's fine because he was per- he was a perfectly good. He was you know he's better than he's still better than all of our available centre halves with the exception of maybe Fabinho, um, Lovren at, at this <laughs> point. But we were we were burned by him. If you're getting another Lovren in, at least we get to have a year or two before we decide we hate him. Yeah, yeah. I was just I was just going to add that Lovren would have had a brilliant season this season if he'd have stayed. He'd have had a lovely time, and we'd have all been singing his praises for the most part as well. Because I thought 
I thought his last season with us, so I, I, I thought he was, I thought he was decent. I thought he came in in periods and was really, really solid. It was just, you know, it's a shame for him, isn't it? How it, how it sometimes works out. But um, I, I, I'm, 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 I, I, I would. I wasn't as excited about Davis as I am after you, you guys released a video with um, a Preston fan um, just yeah. a, a few hours ago. And if, 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 if the guys watching on YouTube now haven't watched it, go, have a look at it after this because it's, it's brilliant. And it really, it really turned my mind around. The Preston fans, I mean, that fella you, you, you have, was it, was it De- De- Dave? Ben. 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 Ben HD. HD. Saying, saying he's Preston's best player. They've thought for a couple of years now that he could have played in the Premier League. He's got incredible attributes, left-footed, can play a pass, can get his head up, can link the play a little bit. I'm not sure his I'm not I'm not sure his statistics um quite hold up under scrutiny to to his his, his ball passing um ability. It's it's a, there's a lot of long balls there. Um and he and he certainly looked quite nervous in his in his little interview he did with um with that, with with the club, he looked he looked absolutely terrified, as you, as you probably would be. But he, but also he, also he looked he did look quite excited, which I always love to see. I always love a I always love a player coming in that looks genuinely excited to be here. We had it when Sadio Mane um, signed, couldn't stop smiling. Andy Robbo was another one that looked genuinely excited at the prospect, and that's for me. You know, that's 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 what it's all about. You know, that kind of nice mixture of nerves and excitement. And if and if 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 he, if he carries on developing how I think he will, then I think you know we 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 could have a really a really lovely signing there. Absolutely, we had a, a couple of super chats in on the on the on the topics. Uh, Josh Owen uh, with five pound super chat. Thank you, Josh. Uh, saying hope Ben Davies turned out to be a hidden talent. Good luck to Tacky. I think LFC came too soon. Uh, thoughts on Elliot tearing up the championship. We'll get to that in a second. And uh, Ashley Frith, uh, who anyone uh, YouTube members who watched the final word show yesterday will know that Ashley was about to uh, propose to his to his uh, to his girlfriend. And he says, guys, she said yes. Can we have a round of applause? For, uh, Ashley, congratulations. Congratulations! <laughs> Second best news behind us signing two centre backs. Um, <laughs> option, <laughs> option to buy Kavak is so smart. Even if if he does well, eighteen million is a steal as well. Yeah, agree on that. Um, yeah, we haven't really t- talked about the tacky stuff, um, Chris. I, I, I put this out on Twitter last night. I'm not sure whether to feel gutted or happy for him because. I, d- I do feel a bit sad that he's not been given more opportunities, I, I, but equally. He, he, he does it. He, I think he deserves to play, and if he's not deserving to play at Liverpool, he certainly deserves to play somewhere. Yeah, he's he's had a tough he had a tough start to his career at Liverpool, didn't he? Um, you know, coming in and uh, and the pandemic and all that type of stuff, and, and and learning the language and everything else. And he's not really kicked on this season from it either. You know, he's had j- just a few minutes. Was it six minutes or something since he started against Crystal Palace? Which is crazy. I think I saw a start flying around last night, something like that. But I like him. I think he's a, a neat and tidy sort of players. I think there's something that Klopp doesn't like about him. I don't know whether that's his defensive work because I think it's quite easy to see what someone gives you in an offensive sense when you're watching the game. It's very, it's, it's a lot more difficult to see whether they're keeping shape, whether they're tracking runs, are they being in the, are they in the right position when you're watching it on the television, quite honestly. Um, so I'd, I'd hazard a guess that it's probably something to do with that side of his game that maybe Klopp isn't particularly keen on or maybe thinks he needs to work on. But in uh, Ralph Hasenhutl's system, that's that's a good system for Minamino to go into. Um, and he's you know he'll be playing with Danny Ings, and we know all about his qualities and what he can bring and stuff like that. So hopefully this isn't the end of the road for Minamino. This feels like a move that although it's come about quickly and it doesn't feel like Liverpool have thought about it. On the surface, it sounds a good move. Yeah, I think you know there's 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 clearly. That a few players there that Liverpool would have accepted offers for. Um, Sam and, uh, you know, uh, the Minamino one is a surprise. You know, I, I was joking last night that, like, Southampton got in touch about Nico Williams and, and, uh, and Edward said, no, you can't have Nico Williams. And they've gone, uh, well, who can we have then? And, he, he, oh, well, I just got this... Japanese international here who might might well uh, suit the and they've gone. Ooh, he sounds very interesting. Go on, we'll have a little. We'll have a. It's like when you go in to do the do the, the do like the the food shop and you just come out with loads of biscuits instead. Um, like <laughs> they've gone in to try and get a right back and they've come out with they've come out with a a, a, a pressing forward instead. Um, it, it's it's a look. It's a decent move. It's it is a decent move. Southampton play a good brand of footy. It's a good manager there. You know, we we buy players from there all the time anyway. So 
Maybe that's just what we need. It was just what we needed to do. Just get him in bed. That IOU in on deadline day. Did they? Yeah, yeah. I, I reckon Ed just got one of those rooms. It's like a mystic Meg ball in when the, the directors of football zoom in, and it's just like you don't want to buy him. Take take Jordan I. <laughs> take, uh, take Stewart. Oh, I know. Take Minamino. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to ping you this YouTube like, highlights reel to yeah, check out. Yeah, Have a look yeah. at this. Watch this two minute yeah. highlight reel. Doesn't he? He looks so amazing, big. right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think with him, if you're not getting a game over Origi, the most horizontal man in world football, then you know clearly you're not going to get much of a game of football, are you? I'm quite glad for him to be honest. I was talking to Ross about it this morning. You know, from a human, humane point of view, I agree with him. It, it, it is difficult. You know, he hasn't had a, a great time, and it must be hard for him to sit on the bench a million miles from from home or from you know even Austria where he, where he was dead comfortable and 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 he's not getting a game at all. He can't get a look, and he's not getting off the bench and. I remember Oxley Chamberlain saying something in an interview a few years ago, saying that playing centre midfield for Liverpool in the eight is the most complicated position in, in football that he's come across. So when you consider Minamino, who was playing in a bit of a, a ten, an eight and a half for, for Salzburg, that is probably quite hard for him to adapt to. Yeah. Add to that, playing the number nine position, he's just clearly not physical enough to play there. So I just think, like you said, Klopp sees some. I just don't think he really fits into what we do. I think if we had a six foot four striker like Calvin Lewin up front, who just bodies people out of the way with his elbows and you know two really quick wingers like maybe we have and two sitting midfielders he could be your guy to sit in there and just sort of play in between the lines but it, it, we just don't play that way so you know it's probably the best thing for him go and play in their Christmas tree formation or 4 2 2 2 whatever it is they do and you know he'll have Walcott and um, is it Che the young lad and, the, and Ings running run, making all kinds of runs for him I'm sure he'll revitalise his career there and then we'll sell him for 40 million quid to some idiot in the summer <laughs> sounds absolutely <laughs> wonderful as far as I can say yeah and, um, uh, James you know, the, the other bit of news obviously it kind of leads us into the Brighton game really we know that Joel Matip's out for the season now at three of our, well, all of our three senior centre halves that we started the season with now out for the entire season, each each of different injuries. Um, it does beg the question on the Brighton thing. At least you know, we can part that to one side now. We've hit upon the Jordan Henderson, Nat Phillips thing for the moment. You would imagine that will carry on at least for this game. But there's definitely going to be a case where I mean, like I mean, the time of recording or you know, time of live stream, and we are, we're, we're like at, at half eleven on Tuesday. Kabak is flying to, to Liverpool, you know, to 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 to, be, to do his unveiling and what have you. So we won't have trained, I imagine, before before Brighton. You'd imagine Davies will at least be on the bench. Um, at least because we haven't got enough players to actually fill a substitute bench at this point. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the the mission for both of those lads is now to just to, to watch and learn and see if you can improve upon what we've got there. Because at the minute, Jordan Henderson's playing at a fantastic level, Fabinho's playing at a fantastic level. And I think they'll probably be getting lots of encouragement off those two lads. Like, come on, come on. Get up to speed. Come on, come on. Anything to make sure they get they get out of the fence and back into the middle of the park. Yeah, it's, and so so will Klopp as well. I mean, he like like I like I I think I mentioned earlier. You know, he must, he must be desperate to start rotating that midfield a little bit more and getting those players further up the pitch. Nat, Nat Phillips and, um, and 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 Hendo didn't didn't put a foot wrong for me. I haven't done for a couple of games. I think I think it's been. Like you say, Jordan Henderson's. I mean, <laughs> made the, made the position his own in in in, in some respects. Um, it, it'll be exa- it'll be the same for Brighton. I don't expect. I watched um, I watched the Tottenham Brighton game at the, uh, at the weekend, and um, but Brighton and Brighton were, they they played well. They you know they they're they're a decent side. They'll 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 come into this with huge confidence as well off the back of that. Um, Tottenham were utterly utterly miserable though at the weekend. Good God, they were. I mean, they, I mean, apart from the fact they cost me about six six hundred quid on an accumulator, <laughs> uh, genuinely. Um, they, yeah, they they are they offered nothing, but Brighton will be full of confidence, and 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 you know, they'll they'll, they'll be looking they'll be looking to any way they can to expose us at the back. But I just I just don't see it happening. I see it being you know another another really really mature performance like what we like like we saw against West Ham. You know, controlling the game. Didn't give away too much, you know. We we controlled the tempo. Okay, it might not have been the quickest tempo, but we certainly controlled it. And that's that's what you expect. Uh, to, it's tomorrow, tomorrow, isn't it? Jesus, God, these games come around fast, don't they? Yeah, deadline day, having deadline days like having an extra game day. You, know, you, know, you get so emotionally involved. Uh, it's, for like, the first it's like time Boxing maybe. Day over the Christmas period. We've had like two <laughs> exciting days, and then it's New Year's Eve tomorrow. <laughs> 
Totally, I mean, it's completely gone with the two. Yeah, I, I agree. And yeah, it, I mean, uh, Brighton's actually. I mean, it, it's not a, it's not an easy game by by any stretch, Chris. But it is. A, I'm glad that we're coming up against a, a Brighton now because again, just giving us that extra time just to get the get the new lads in, get them settled, make sure they've got the names printed on the back of the shirts, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm not saying you're chucking them in for Man City, but if we end up in a in a catastrophic situation, which let's be honest is perfectly likely to happen given how we've been handling injuries at the moment um i wouldn't I, you know I, I, having players at least having trained a little bit ahead before man city would be fine before, yeah. before we unleash the ben davies i can't imagine meeting your teammates on the coach the game is probably the best thing to do <laughs> pick them up at home <laughs> yeah yeah uh, we'll get you on the way to anfield come on lads hello everybody you walking down the train hello, hello i'm ben um i'm always a nice one um uh, no, probably not going to yeah. start against Brighton. Bobby no. Firmino's going, where is Preston? <laughs> what, is, what, is, what is this? What's a Preston? What's it being big brother? Is yeah. yeah, Dustin Diamond passed no. away. Sad news. Yeah. Didn't know that. Sorry, Sam. There you go. Sorry, mate. Sorry to Ru- be the Ru- bearer Ru- of bad times. As long as Kelly's still about, we're all right. Lovely reference. Lovely <laughs> reference. <laughs> Yeah. Oh dear. Um, right. Yeah. Oh, I've just killed that, haven't I? I've just absolutely killed everyone off. With that. Well, yeah. Jesse Lingard moved for United. That's lifted up again. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'd rather have stayed. They're gonna, they're gonna have a strong social media game. West Ham moving forward. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, uh, yeah, plenty to look forward to. We'll be covering all, most of these topics uh, in more depth and detail. Obviously, we did the final word show on, uh, God, yesterday. God, it was only yesterday. <laughs> only 15 hours of content to go, though. Yeah, that was only yesterday. We did an hour-long show looking back at the win uh, at the weekend over West Ham. So you can check that out if you are a Tier 2 or Tier 3 member here on YouTube or if you subscribe to the RedmanTV.com. Uh, this afternoon, uh, not long after this, I'm recording the Reds News Roundup. Far more in-depth and detail about all of Liverpool's transfer business on deadline day and what that can, you know, and had a great insight. I'm talking to John Welsh, who played alongside. I thought uh, you were ben talking Davies. about Sam reminding you that he uh, existed. Yeah. That's how it sounded. A wonderful story. Well, yeah, yeah. so yeah. the <laughs> um, It was just face down. It was like fucking rude. That former man. Liverpool midfielder John Welsh, uh, who will play, who played alongside Ben Davies at Preston. I'm talking to him a little bit later on to get some more insight into all of that good stuff. Uh, and of course, we've got the match build up, which is already out for Brighton, where we had no idea what was going to happen with Liverpool centre back issues. So that's worth watching as well uh, but listen thanks very much for watching for listening uh, for reviewing for liking and of course for subscribing uh, we'll be back with another Red Men podcast podcast well done Paul next week end it <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the Redmen TV YouTube channel. Everything we do here is funded by our wonderful subscribers to theredmentv.com. Get over there, sign up and get amazing additional content, interviews, documentaries, mini-series and of course additional pre and post match day content.